Hello and welcome back. Today, I am super excited to share this project that I've been working on for quite a while. And what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to answer the question, can AI agents design a board game from a simple prompt? So I do want to start with a little bit of a story though, because I think this is funny. So back about 15 years ago when I was in the game industry, my team and I used to joke a lot about one day we'll be able to take a game design document, feed it into a computer, and out would come a fully playable game. Now at that time, we were so far away from anything like that being a reality, we just all thought it was a joke. Uh, but we did joke about that a lot, that our jobs were gonna be replaced one day by a designer writing a game design document and feeding it into a machine. So what I wanna do is I wanna see if I can use the machine to generate a good board game design document. And then my next step, which I've already started on, is can I take that game design document and turn it into code? So let's find out, let's jump right into it. So first off, I chose Autogen. It's a framework for really creating multi-agent systems. So it allows us to define specialized agents that can collaborate, debate, refine ideas, uh, stuff like that. It's perfect for the creative process of game design where there's different roles, like a, maybe someone that specializes in lore, like character design, deck architecture, and they all need to work together. And there's, it's really such a powerful agentic system that I've just enjoyed using. It's really easy to get up and running and I've got everything written in Python. So ultimately, I mean, if you haven't tried Autogen yet, I'd recommend it because it is really simple to use and they have great documentation. I felt the documentation to be just phenomenal. So the models I used, I wanted to use the new uh, Phi 4 model. So I'm using the Q4 underscore K underscore M locally. I'm using, I tested the DeepSeek version three cloud. And of course those are just, it's performing incredibly well. And I also tested the Mistral Nemo 2407 Q4. And because of what I'm doing, I also need a fairly large context window. So I had to max out the context window on 5.4 to be able to support this. And Mistral Nemo, I was able to set a pretty large one as well. But 5.4 was the newest release because I wanted to use the official one that was just, uh, just released by Microsoft, the official weights. So I wanna talk a little bit about the prompt that I wanna use. So the goal here is that anybody could come in and come up with a very simple prompt. Does, you don't even need to give much detail. Of course, the more detail that you would give, the better. So an example would be, I'd like a game themed around raccoons. You know, ideally it would be a cooperative game so that my family of five could play together. So that's the key thing, five player game. It should be simple enough for a 10 year old, but have enough, enough depth to keep teenagers engaged. The game should involve resource management, stuff like that. You could put any of that stuff in there as well. But anyway, this really is all the goal is like, this is all that, that I want to be able to give the agents and then have them go to work. So the first series of agents, and I did do this in a multi uh, different steps of agents. So I have a series of agents work together. This is step one. It was called us the initial agent pass. So here, the first series of agents work together. Um, and you can kind of tell by the names what they do, but for example, the lore master would start by creating the, the game world. The character designer would build any characters so that they get personality and things around it. The game designer would take those and build it into the core mechanics of the game. If a deck needs to be made or deck cards need to be made, the deck architect would do that. And then I've got a balancer agent that reviews everything to make sure it's fairly balanced. And then the documentary is really simple because it's just going to pull all that together and put it into a format for a game design document. Okay, so what I'm showing here is I've got four different windows. In the top left, I've got my code. You can kind of follow along with the logs. Top right is LM Studio. You can see the logs that are happening on that local server. Bottom left is my system stats and bottom right is the visual representation of how the nodes talk to each other. I do want to improve that visual representation, but it's really interesting to just follow along how those nodes are actually talking to one another. The one caveat I would say here is I've actually added a selection method on this particular agent uh, group, and that, that actually calls an LLM to ask it who should be next. A lot of the ones you see out there 
are logic based. So it's like if this person, if this agent talked, go to this one. If this agent was the last one and it's got this thing in the output, you know, do this next thing. But no, I actually wanted to be fully dynamic. So I'm using another agent, another Carlton LLM to actually decide who's going next. And it, to me, it's actually been pretty phenomenal, like looking at the results here. So you can kind of see how all these agents are working together. The, again, I don't represent well when they're doing multi-call back and forth because that is actually happening. So they, you know, the, the documenter might be calling the same model two or three times there. The next series of uh, agents I've got is the reviewers. So what that does is it takes everything that the first set did, basically like think about it, the game design document that exists so far, and it just reviews the rules and it does a balance, um, another balance check on it. It checks the theme to make sure that it makes sense and is consistent. And then it checks to make sure that it, it feels like it's playable. And this has actually been very interesting because there have been times that it, this has recommended changes and then the, the next set will actually go through and like implement those changes here. This one is the one that I really wanted to get working and it worked way better than I ever imagined. So what I'm doing is I'm simulating, there's, there's really only three agents. I got the user proxy, player one and player two. But I'm simulating gameplay between player one and player two. And the game master really is overseeing the simulation. That's right, I do have a game master in there too. And this is where we find out if the game is actually gonna be functional or not, or if it's gonna be a hot mess. So for example, if player one keeps winning because they figured out how to hoard all the trash cards because of raccoons, if this was a raccoon game, we know we need to tweak the balance. Uh, just a funny fact, during one simulation, the raccoons formed a union and demanded better working conditions. And we had to remind them that they were fictional characters and it was a, it was a whole thing. Anyway, the example that I've got up here, as you can see, once I've got it fine tuned uh, to the point like where it's like an action phase and they're actually taking turns, it'll actually go through to game completion as long as I have enough rounds set. And then I capture all of that feedback and then feed it in to this next set of agents, which is the balance, the game set, I don't know the better, the balance chat group. And what this is doing is it's looking at all that gameplay simulation. It's looking at the review. So basically, remember the steps we've gone through. We generated the first one. We've done a bunch of stuff on it. We've checked that, we've collected that information. We then uh, checked all the balance and we gameplay simulated it. We've taken all that and now we're gonna implement it into a balance, a final balance feedback document. So what this is gonna do is like, based on the gameplay, uh, I'm gonna look at how all of that actually happened in the gameplay, taking into account the feedback from the previous one, and then document what I think should happen in the final uh, version of this document. So then we move to the refinement group, and this group is hit or miss, and I've been trying to tweak it. So I'm gonna be honest with you, like this one is not perfect yet, but the idea here was to ideally be able to reuse a lot of the previous agents bring it back in with that feedback that's been collected from the final balance uh, chat group and be able to put it in a format where ultimately we're gonna generate a refined game design document. And we do get a refined game design document, but I do lose a little bit of context sometimes depending on the model I'm using. And no matter what I've been able to do kind of tweaking the way these agents work together, it just hasn't worked out as well. Um, I could fix this pretty easily, to be honest, and and just make it more of a round robin approach in all of them. But I really wanted to test out like the dynamic nature of it where I'm hands off, I'm not controlling who goes and decides to do what, I'm giving it a goal and each of the agents having a goal and I want it to come out with a game design document. Ultimately, what I wanna do is I wanna take this from a design document generator to code and I've already started working on that. And I'm pretty excited about the progress that I've made on that already. And honestly, if, if you would like to play around with this, please let me know. I need to clean up the code a lot to be able to actually make this useful for people because I've been, I've been toying around with this and I've got like 17 million versions of this uh, game design document. And I would need to go and kind of like productionalize it and release it on GitHub. But if it's something that's even interesting to people, I'm willing to do that and then maybe we could iterate on it and try to get the 
the game design document piece even even better. And there might be other roles that I'm not thinking about. Um, for example, I have an artist that I didn't talk about very much, but the goal of the artist is to actually go through and generate prompts that I could use to generate the art for it. So I'm going to just really quickly run through the code just so you guys can kind of see how I have this set up. And again, it's not, I, this code is not meant to be like production code in any way whatsoever, but really this code is just to show you sort of how the, how I've set up some of the agent structure. So ultimately the visualization of it was a lot of this code, unfortunately, because getting that, I wanted to be able to show kind of how that's actually working. So I'm going to go down here to where I'm actually generating the different agents. So you can see how simple some of these prompts are and so how complex some of the ones below are. But we've got our lore master, character designer, deck architect, turn analyzer, game designer. And then our documenter is the one that I've had to really tune because I want it in a very particular format here. And then as you are a balance or you are a balancer, you analyze game mechanics, et cetera. And here's my artist, a rule reviewer, balance reviewer, so on, so on, so on. In all, there are 17 agents here. And I do want to show an example of the gameplay simulation. So this is an example of the gameplay simulation that occurred. So you can see end of, play, end of uh, turn two, there's a market phase, turn three, predator phase. This was a chicken-based theme one. Uh, one of my kids is a really big fan of chickens. So I decided to see if it could actually generate a good board game design on chickens. And actually, I don't think this one's bad. Uh, I don't think it's complex enough. And I do think there's some balance issues. But I don't, actually don't think it's a terrible one. I spent time kind of like uh, reviewing this one quite a bit. And then I've got this one. Let me just put it on preview mode here to make sure we can see it a little bit more. And this one's that chicken empire. So this would be like an example of the final game design document. So you can see the chicken egg empire was the name that it came up with. It came up with the lore and setting, the different characters that you can play with. I didn't specify that I wanted this one to be a five player game uh, in this particular prompt. The components. This is one thing I really wanted it to do is really showcase the components that are part of the game because I want to be able to see if I can generate the code for it from this document and then maybe even eventually be able to build like a printable prototype of it so that you can play it like in person. And then I've got my setup and how that's done, the, the particular game rules with the different phases. It generated all this. I did nothing but the initial prompt here. The deck building, so it came up with a deck builder in this particular case, how you win and lose. And see here, here's some of the art prompts. Not totally happy with that one. But again, this one in particular was done with uh, 5.4. And if I would have used um, Deep Seek V3, it would end up being, you know, a slightly better one. We've got my balance and strategy. And here's uh, some of the appendix with upgrade cards, predator cards, character abilities, etc. cetera. Uh, and final note. So it's not bad. I think I'm well on my way to actually being able to generate a good um, board game design document. And I'm excited about where this is going. And you can kind of see here that I've already started on the coder and I've actually got versions of this working, but it's not as good as I want it to yet. And what it does is it takes the refined uh, board game design document and then breaks it out into code. And I've actually got the code executing via an agent, looking for errors and then going back and trying to fix it. But I really wanted to talk about this particular piece of it because I'm amazed with how well these 17 agents are working kind of together. You know, there's pods of like eight and there's pods of three, but there's kind of working together in a way that um, is pretty fascinating to me. And anyway, that's it for today. Uh, this is a project I'm incredibly excited about and I hope you guys are too. I hope you get some ideas and inspiration on how you could potentially build with agents. Anyway, thank you. Please like and subscribe if you like content like this. This takes a lot of work. And I will see you guys next time.